So, we should get a waiting room to pop up, shouldn't we? Okay, good. So, just you and me. So, you can mute me. Nice. Okay, I'm connecting. Oh, Al Poindexter. Oh, that's cool. Did he join? Yeah. Oh, no, he's in the waiting room. Yeah. Okay, so you and I are the two that are joined. Okay, so now, what do we do now? We we go to the place where you make me a co-host, which is... You go back to participants. Oh, that's right. Yeah, just click on yourself and the little dots. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to start getting some feedback. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay, so uh, Okay, so after Zoom, I'll say, I'm just after Zoom, you All right, so I'm going to turn the volume line. Wait there. All right, so after Zoom, I'm a co-host now, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, co-host. Okay. So here's the waiting room. So I can control the waiting room from over here. Yeah, the mic. Okay, we know the microphone works, obviously. Mm -hmm. Do you have the presentation on this end? Yeah. So, and, um, so then to share the screen. So, okay, here's his presentation. Okay, so that's up. And then I guess. Yeah, I go back to the Zoom and the share screen on the very bottom. Okay, I don't think we need this part here. Nope. Just this part. Oh, and then share screen, share screen. Yep, and there it is. Okay. I think you can just like and he'll just uh, full screen it somehow. Yeah, and then um, we just do the slideshow. Leave that blank from the beginning. Okay. And um, it doesn't go automatically, right? Oh, where's your little uh, content? Oh, it's inside okay. assets. Now, the one thing about these um, TV screens is that the um, the red laser doesn't work on them. Right. So, as long as you don't need to connect to anything, you should. Got this lines of my television. Yeah. So, yeah, in order I'm a quality product. in order for the, the TVs, you have to have a green laser. Really? I didn't know that. Um, we found out that just when we started doing this stuff here. Might have another USB. I've run into that problem before, so. Yeah, but they don't stay that's in there. That's got to stay in there. Yeah, that's got to stay in for the microphone. So I've got a mini USB over here, so I can look Yeah, that might. But the big is part of it. There we go. Oh, there it is. Thanks, Patrick. Nice. Yeah, I just bought a new one, too. 
Hey, this one, what I'm getting ready, we're going to be taking some trips this summer, and this thing is way too big to carry. So I got this little 13. Very cool. And it was in the city, so I got it right in the last day at Christmas sales. Saved $300. Uh, and uh, it's a nice little Novo. You, you like the PCs, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think if I ever, because I have my work gets me max, I think I might try to get a high end PC just because um, you still get, you know, a better deal than you would a Mac. Yeah. Now, this thing's got tremendous battery life. I can go three days. So wow. This one. this one I can only get about six hours. Yeah. That's that's how mine is too. It's yeah. Nice. All right, awesome, man. You're welcome. I think we might uh so people are still trickling in, so yeah. So awesome, man. I have a lot of these new app things they put over here. How do I get rid of these apps? So this bar down here. Maybe we can test it out. Whoops. Try that. That's got to be closed off. Yep, there you go. Oh, then yep. oh, oh. I know what the max is shortcuts. So you know, and so. then um, I can hide this somehow. Hide, uh, hide floating meat, meat and contrast. Cool. Well, we got 15 minutes till things. Uh, oh. You go all. Oh my god, that's so weird. It doesn't like that. Oh, I, yeah, I did have it there, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, you know, there's something funky about screen sharing that um, causes that stop share and then share. <laughs> it's open twice. Maybe part of that. Uh, the meeting controls. I think it's open twice. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think it's good. Okay, so we'll start at like 6 30. Sounds good. Yeah, perfect. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a PowerPoint thing. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think shuts it off? Uh, it's happened at other meetings too, for some reason. I, don't know, I mean, where I've had to stop and share and start it back over again. So it's like a time thing or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So these are 20 and this one's 30, you say? Okay. So you want to get the Yeah. Really hard You're going to enjoy my talk. I'm sure I will. Oh, there's an effort. Okay, so three dollars for the Okay, awesome. Don't touch it. <laughs> Listen, I need to 
It was just my first time last week. this is called Sherman. Yeah, it tells you every place that I'm on Sutton, I think it's any kind of watching students. Take one of all the well, I said, if you should. First time I asked. I asked everything. Say what you thought. Go all off the back of the bag, isn't it? There is a spirit of the lowest thing. I'm going to fly big time. 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 Thank you. Thank you. I'm um, working on one and a half. And I'm talking to you. I'm going to pursue those signs. Okay, do I know how to use this? Uh, yeah, just uh, just the um, uh, two buttons on the side, yeah. Forward and forward, Dr. Okay, okay, good. So um, the people on Zoom, we tell them to wait until the end, and then uh, when people start asking questions, if there's any on Zoom, I'll raise my hand. All right, so what about... We need that for Zoom especially. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's right here. It's a clip on mic, but it's got such power. Yes, it, it's got such. We don't need to wear it. You don't need. Okay, excellent, yeah. excellent. Yeah, if yeah. I, but if, we do, but we do need to stay in this area. In this area. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Can I walk down there a little bit or no? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it's got a range of about twenty feet. Okay, because yeah. I can project in this room, no problem. Oh, you but got I just you've got projection. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 But I want to make sure I get it for your Zoom people. Yeah. Okay. He's having this open up. Uh, if you have it, we can ask for those. I think we're you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the other one would be called duty. You mean square on the right? Okay. Okay. Right. That's fine. That's fine. Really? Okay. Okay. Do you get one of those little satchels? Yeah, I'll get one. I'll turn you on, baby. That sounds kind of really to Okay. 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 Can you be here? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, actually, I'm not sure. Yeah, 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 I'm not sure.
Yeah, 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 Yeah. And I yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Yeah. Then take care of the session because of the radio. Very much. That's not that. That was good. Yeah. Right. It's not. Uh, uh, last time. Last time. I can just finish. I can yeah, I'm not I'm not I don't want to kill Okay. <laughs> it's not okay. Look at the brain. Yeah. 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 Yes. 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 Yeah. So I was in one of Oh, it'll respond that. Yeah. Whoa. That's a quick release. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably that. Yeah. He's got it right here. Oh, he's got it. Push that arrow, right? Let me just test one. Yeah, uh, the second. I see. Oh, there you go. I'm hitting it. Nothing's happening. Okay. Or am I supposed to point it yeah, towards the computer? Yeah. It's a Zoom thing. Okay. There we go. Yeah. You doing that? Or doing I'm not doing it. Okay. Try it now. Okay. okay. Now you're doing it. We're in business. Yeah. Okay. It's a Zoom thing. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. 
Вы играете в одном месте. Я все. Is this a microphone here? Okay, I don't know. I don't think I need a microphone. We don't have that big a crowd. Anyway, welcome everybody. Um, I have a bunch of announcements first um, before we get started. Um, February 4th is work day at Native Park from 8.30 to 11.30. You don't need to RSVP, just show up. Um, February 9th and 10th is the Jacksonville Landscape Show at the Duval County Fairgrounds. And Kate and I will be there manning a booth. So if you come, please come by and say hello. Um, February 11th is Love Boone Park Day from 9 to noon. So we will be heading up teams to remove invasives from the park. You don't need an RSVP, but if you want to head up a team, please see myself or Walter or Adam after the meeting. Um, February 21st is Rondat Park Invasives Removal Day. Um, and it's this is in conjunction with the Friends of Timaquan Parks. That's from nine to noon. And you don't have to RSVP, but if you want to head up a team, just let me know. Okay, February 25th is the Weed Wrangle from 9 to noon at various parks throughout the city of Jacks. So if you want to participate in that, you can download the flyer from our website. And on February 25th, we will also have a booth at the Duval County Extension Office State of Gardening. So if you go to that, please come by and say hello to me. I will be there. And Kate, you have an announcement too. Mm -hmm. The Florida Big Sea Chat and Monday now we're part of the Florida Native Plant Society statewide group. And every year there's an annual conference. The conference this year, there's a flyer in the back. And, uh, sorry, I need to make a place. We're, it's going to be virtual April 28th through 30th. And then People want to get that together. So we're going to have three field days. One will be in Naples, one will be in Tallahassee, one will be in Sanford. And then they're on different weekends in May. So they're going to be field trips and talks and lunch and just a whole day of stuff. And it's organized so that if you are in a business, you can get all of them. And so go to fmgs.org for more information. This um, registration hasn't opened up yet. The reason I want to bring that up, just so you're thinking about it, next year is going to be in person, and it's going to be hosted by Plains Prairie, which means it's in Gainesville, which means it's driving distance from there, which is nice. And there was a call on the conference made a plea for silent auction items. So I wanted to anybody who can think of anything. Experiences is the bit of stuff. So like a gift certificate for a lawn evaluation or a kayak trip or a surfing lesson rather than stuff. So it's a virtual conference. If it's anything, if it's actual bulk items, then usually we put it within the drivers. So if you have like some giant thing you want to donate to the office, we would limit it to certain things. But if you can think of any sort of experience in a group that might be willing to donate an outing or something like that, then get a hold of us and we can work that out. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. Okay, so our speakers tonight are Mike Adams and Sam Carr. Mike Adams is a conservation ecologist, researcher, educator, and author. He provides conservation and ecological lectures and tours writes a nature column for a local newspaper, is chairman of the Land Acquisition and Management Program in St. John's County, serves as a docent for St. John's River Center, and is vice president of the Bartram Trail Society of Florida. He and his wife manage and reside on the Santeriwa <laughs> private conservation area along the St. John's River. In 2018, he received the Stetson Kennedy Foundation Fellow Man and Mother Earth Award and brings natural history to life with his colorful portrayal of colonial naturalist William Barker. 
Sam Carr is the president of the Barton Trail Conference and the Barton Trail Society of Florida. He's pursuing the establishment of the Barton Trail National Heritage Corridor, covering all 2,500 miles of Barton's travels over the southeastern United States. He also chaired a Putnam County committee to establish the Barton Trail in Putnam County, which became a national recreation trail and has served two terms appointed to the Florida Greenways and Trails Council. And he was also recently recognized by St. John's Riverkeeper as the St. John's River Advocate of the Year. So please give them both a warm welcome. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is William Bartram. I'd like to welcome you to this fine establishment this evening where I'm going to talk to you this evening about some of the resources that I've been encountering in my travels right out here, right out here along the Rolata River of Lakes, it will become known as the St. John's River. Most of you probably know this. But I'm going to be talking about the resources, the plants, the animals that I'm seeing, some of the Native Americans that I'm interacting with. And then my very good friend, Sam Carr, is going to talk about a trail that's being organized in my honor in the whole southeastern part of the United States, but particularly in the East Florida Territory. So I welcome you this evening. I'm not used to these newfangled devices, but 1774, you know. This you already heard from our gracious hostess. What I want you to look at in this particular piece is this is the mode of my traveling. A lot of my activity is on foot or on horseback, but most of my traveling is by boat on the water. And this is a typical scene in my park. If you study this, this drawing and this artwork closely, you'll see all kinds of things. You'll see a box towards the lower right there with a compass on top. You'll see my sketchbook that I'm actually drawing in. Notice the outfit, a very good likeness. <laughs> Behind me is a barrel that probably has rice or flour in it. You see, I brought my friend there, a little mascot, keeping me company. Beyond that, I have some plant presses. You also notice a couple live specimens that I'm carrying with me. Behind that is a, a canteen, similar to this. I won't tell you what's in here. A knapsack with various supplies in it and a lantern in the back. But look more closely at some of the some of the other design in this picture. In the upper left, you'll see some birds flying, probably ibis. Now, I hope to publish something around 1791, and I'm keeping a log and a journal and I'm drawing sketches, even drawing a few maps in my travels. And I hope to publish this and I did quite a bit with birds and animals. I think maybe in the future, people will think of Billy Barker as a botanist, but I was much more than a botanist. <laughs> you look kind of above the bark there, you'll see a couple of raccoons on the shoreline of this tributary. There's a good chance that this is a tributary of the St. John's River. In the lower right, a lot of details in this photo. You really have to study it in this artwork. Mushrooms. Lots of things to look at here. But this is my chief mode of travel. And I had a larger boat on occasion out in the main channel of the river, and it was fashioned with a sail. And I had oars with it, too. So if it wasn't windy enough, I would have to paddle. This is a map that's been produced. You see the, the lines in red. Those are my travels. And I started off, my father, John, has a herbarium in a garden in the town of Philadelphia in the Pennsylvania colony along the Schoolfield River, it's called. That's where we live. And I came down by ship to, in the South Carolina territory there, Charlestown. From there, I came down to the village of Savannah and then I did a Northwest trek up towards a town that will be known as Augusta, 
along the Savannah River there to a place called Buffalo Lake. You can guess why it's named Buffalo Lake. There's some minerals in the soil that a lot of animals like to go in and consume and that type of thing, deer, cattle, perhaps even some buffalo. Came back down. By the way, that entourage from Savannah up towards the Appalachian Mountains there, the foothills, I was with an entourage of over 80 men on horseback. There were soldiers, there were government officials, there were farmers, there were politicians. They were all interested in what kind of settlement opportunities are along the way. Are the natives friendly? Things like that. I was trying to document all this in my travels, and I kept notes of this all along the way. Came back down, and then you can see from the village of Savannah, I came down and I went through a place that will become known as Darien in the Georgia territory, the Georgia colony. Has anybody ever heard of this place? Yep, yep. Went through there and spent some time along a watershed near that village called the Altamaha River, a beautiful river. And I'm gonna talk about a couple of plants I encountered along the way. One of them is very famous, very famous indeed. So I make my way south continuing I cross over into Amelia Island and make my way down through what will become known as Nassau County and down into the Duval County area. And I cross the Wallata at a place called Calvary. And I believe it's just over here. It's not very far at all. And Sam and I were estimating it's probably only a quarter mile across it. There was a ferry across. A ferry was across there, and I came across with two horses, and I had met a young man in Darien. I think his name was young Mr. McIntosh. He wanted to come with me. This lad was only up 18 years old. He wanted to come with me. His father was a little reluctant. I said I'd take good care of him, that type of thing. So he came down. We crossed at the ferry there, and he decided he didn't want to continue on with the journey. I think he liked all the activities around Calvert. So he stayed and I went on my way. I came across, I came across the river and I met a plantation owner and he fashioned me the sailboat that I was describing to you about 15 feet long, about this distance with a sail and oars. And I just had to trade my two horses. I thought it was a lot. From there, you see, I ended up going as far south as what's what I call in my notes and in the in the travels, Battle Lagoon, kind of near Blue Springs. If anybody might know where Blue Springs is, came back up, and my base area was near the village of a place that would become known as Palatka. It was called Stokes Landing, the lower store, and that was where I based all my activities out of. And then I took a venture to the west there. You can see that. I visited an amazing place. I called it the Great Alachua Savannah. I think, I think in modern times it will become known as Paynes Prairie State Park. But I call it the Alachua Savannah. I prepared an amazing map of the Alachua Savannah, complete with little animal figures in there, cracker horses and cracker cattle. There was even bison. I moved my way back out and you can see I, I, I continued on and I went back up and I came down through another part of Georgia into Alabama and Mississippi and down into what was known as West Florida, but it's really other states in modern times. As far west as to the west there, Point Coupe, I believe it's identified as. Not far from the Mississippi River. It was a four-year journey. Now, this is a deep subject. This is one of the animals that I first encountered when I came across at Calford. And I had read a lot of Chinese literature. My father, John, has a library at our garden and herbarium. And I had read a lot of Chinese literature. And these creatures, to me, look like dragons. In fact, they had smoke coming out of their nostrils and fire coming out of their mouth. 
and they would arch their backs and lift their tails, just like what you see here. Now, some people may say, do those animals really do? Well, I'm here to tell you that I witnessed it, and I believe in future years, Mr. Carr, college researchers will determine that, in fact, these animals, and they're not dragons at all. I think there's something called, the Spanish call them El Lagarto, giant lizards. You may recognize these animals if you live near here. But I'm here to tell you, those positions that you see those animals in that I sketched, I've seen that and it's been verified by college researchers. The smoke that you see coming out of their nostrils, it's really water vapor, but it sure does look like smoke. And the fire and the water that you see coming out of their mouth, it's just water coming out of their mouth. And the fish that that one on the right has in his mouth, I was at a place on the river once where the river got real narrow and the fish were coming through all at once. And these creatures, they would line up on the upstream side. And then as these fish came through this narrow area, they were snapping them up, just like what you see there. And on the bottom one, see his tail up in the air? I believe that will be discovered as some sort of a territorial thing or mating ritual with the tail up in the air like this. And then, have you ever seen them where their backs are up out of the water and their backs shiver and vibrate and the water comes up off the backs? That's what that bottom one is doing. Another mating ritual. Now, I must admit, I was so focused on the creatures in my artwork here. The surrounding details there wasn't as strong as I could be. That wasn't my focus. My focus was the creatures because I really didn't encounter any rocky, rocky terrain or something like that where I was seeing these alligators. But it's quite amazing. That's what those animals are. And when I first came into the Wallaca, after crossing at Calford, I looked along the banks of the river. These animals were in such numbers, I could have walked on their backs, had them in tunnels. But I didn't. Because a few days later, I was in my sailboat going upstream. One of these creatures tried to get into my, he had his leg up on the sidewall of my boat. I had a stick, I was going like this, trying to get this creature out. I had to. And for my fusy. I took care of that after. But he was trying to get in my arms. So that's my alligator story. I want to talk about some birds and plants that kind of have an association now. This is a bird that I've been sketching, and you see the plant in the background there. That's a thalia. Alligator reed, fire reed, fire plants, all kinds of common names. And the bird is actually an American bittern. And I've encountered both of these in connection to each other. Now, there's a new system, some kind of a magic box that people have that captures the picture on the right. I think it might be something like photography or something like that. I'm not certain. But you can see my sketch is very close to the actual picture. Photo, that's what it's called. You see that word there? Photo of a thalia. Here's another one. You can run this talking to you about the Alta Baja River up in the southeastern Georgia colony near the village of Darien. Well, in 1765, I came down with my father, John, initially. We were doing a survey. He was a royal botanist for England at the time. We were coming down, and we somehow became somewhat disoriented on the Altamaha River, and we were finding this particular plant called the fever bark. And there's my colorized sketch. 
Now, typically, when I was doing my sketches in my in my artwork pages, it was in black and white. Sometimes using charcoal pencils, sometimes using other things, but it was mainly in black and white. And then those colorized versions that you see there, that was all done back at the herbarium. When I got back to the herbarium, much of it from my memory. And look at that. Beaver bar. It's a beautiful flower. And then some morphology of the shrub or bush, or perhaps even a small tree. Now, I'm not sure if they occur this far south into the East Florida Territory, into the Florida Peninsula, but up there in the Southeast Georgia colony, they were doing a very, very prolific population in that area. Now, there's another plant that I've been encountering that really is quite amazing. Franklinia alatamaha. There's my sketch. I encountered this plant along the same river there in the Southeast Georgia colony near the village of Darien. That's my colorized sketch. And it was on the same adventure where my father, John and I, we kind of got disoriented a little bit. We were following this river and we got disoriented. But we found this, but we didn't collect it in 1765. This was actually when I came back again in 1774 when I was on my own commission from a position in London, England. Then I drew this sketch. And look at that. And the interesting story about the Frank Lydia. By, by virtue of the genus name, it was named after a very good friend of my father in Philadelphia. You may have heard of this gentleman. May or may look like you know. Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, yeah. My father, John, is plugged in with all the mover and shakers around the Philadelphia town. And him and Benjamin Franklin, they have some other things going on. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. I can't really say too much of this for about it. But remember, this is during the revolutionary times in the colonies. A lot of different things were going on behind the scenes. But this particular plant, what my father John and I did, I collected seeds and I took them back in 1774. I took them back to the herbarium. And that population that we were able to propagate from there are the only living remnants of the initial populate of the original population that was around the Alpha Alatamaha River. The species would be extinct. I just wanted to show you a picture of my house. My father's house along the Schuylkill River there in Philadelphia. Yep. That plant in the foreground, that's the Franklinian. Question, sir. Yes. The, the, they know all, I think, in modern days. Now, I'm not sure. It's still 1774 while I'm talking to you right now. Yeah. But I believe in future years, I'm talking hundreds of years, it will be scientifically cultivated where the plants can be acquired. Yeah, I think that's the proper terminology. Bartram Ixia. What's the name of this chapter? There's my colorized version. It's quite amazing. I'm sure you all know about the ecology of this particular plant and flower. It's very difficult to see in the field. You know all about this. Very, very difficult to see out in the woods. When I was encountering it, it was in pine flatwoods areas that generally the Indians would burn for the grazing animals like white-tailed deer to create forage for the white-tailed deer. These burned out areas, these particular flowers did so well in these areas. And there's a place upstream from here in Calford, 
I think the village will become known as Palatka, something like that. Well, I think in future years, that town will become known as the city of murals. Has anyone ever been down to that town in modern times? That's a place where they have murals like this all over the town. And lo and behold, look what plant do they have on one of their murals. My Ixia. Now, what's quite interesting, there's also the one that I encountered was in the spring, April, maybe May, maybe March, but mostly April. This one on the right, that's a fall blooming Ixia. And there blooms in August, maybe through October, same type of habitat. And it really likes pine flatwoods and it likes forests that are burned. And the really interesting thing about both of these plants, it only blooms one morning. They're really hard to see. Even if you know where there's a whole field of Ipsia, you could plan a trip to go visit them and they may have already opened up or they're not ready to open up yet. But if you time it right, you could go out to that recently burned pine flatwoods and it would be a carpet of blue and purple flowers. Beautiful. You see the difference between the spring blooming one and the fall blooming one. The petals are more rounded. And this is just like your logo. The logo for your chapter. You see the anthers there with the pollen on them in the center. The style sticking out to the left there with the stigma on the end. Just like your logo. It's a beautiful flower indeed. Bartram Stixia. Now I wanted to present a little sample of some of my literary work, particularly related to this plant. Every species or variety of the tribe of plants exhibit very eminent beauties, but this with applause claims preeminence. Its looking form of growth with the brilliant coloring of its flowers strikes on the imagination delight, and one can't look at it but with admiration. The color of this most delightful of flowers is a lively blue reflecting a slight cast of purple. The delicate texture of these flowers is admirable beyond anything that vegetation presents besides. But though these flowers are so short of durance that seemingly defect is ample compensated by a most liberal succession for the next morning, the curious botanist is delighted by seeing seeming return of these fugitives, or he would rather imagine himself beholding a new creation and in the midst of thousands. That's what I described to you. If you can get the timing right of your visit to the forest where they're blooming, you'll see thousands of them. Blue and purple flowers. But it's hard to do. It's hard to get the timing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes some of the things that I was encountering in my travels in 1774 and earlier with my father John in 1765. And if you're curious by any of this that I talked about, and my good friend Sam Paul will continue on with this adventure, but See if you can find this book that I hope to publish around 1791. I'm going to call it The Travels of William Bartram. The title is much longer, but I'm going to be shorter for a few minutes. See if you can find that and spend a little time with it. It is maybe difficult reading, but I can assure you, you will be rewarded with what you learn, especially if you live in the areas that I came to. And we're sitting in one right now.
Ladies and gentlemen, my name is William Barkham. It's been a pleasure speaking with you this evening. Now I'd like to introduce my good friend, Mr. Sam Carr. Thank you, Billy. Appreciate it. You're hard on your father. Yeah. Um, you know, when we when we found out and we were invited to to come here, um, back when the um, when the COVID just started, the National National the Plant Society was having their convention here in Jacksonville University. And we were going to be one of the presenters at that, and uh, so that got canceled and all this, that, and the other, and, and, and we were so looking forward to it. But my relationship with the Ixia chapter actually started a few years before that, and I had contacted them, and we do a um, a frolic in the Saint and on the Saint John's River every uh, every year, and uh, y'all were going to come up and be our native plant representative at, at our um, our our adventure. So think about that. We'd like to have you back. We really would. So uh, this is this is me. I'm I'm a director and past president of the Marshall Trails Conference and president of the Marshall Trail Society of Florida. And um, I've done a, a lot of work with this. It, it, I, how did I come to Marshall? Well, my friend Dean Campbell over here uh, it took me on a paddling trip. And as we were paddling uh, up the St. or down the St. John's River, he kept saying, well, oh, there's where Billy Barcham did this. And then, oh, he's over here, and oh, old manatee's over here. And, oh, that's where the lower shore was. Well, the lower shore is only three miles from my house. I live on the St. John River. And so, you know, I'm starting to get interested now when I know he was there. Well, so am I. And it really is neat. So I cracked the book open, and sure enough, it's just an amazing thing to know that you live in a place where he went. Now, in Palatka, Putnam County, the river is much like it was when we marched and came. So it's not it's not like here in Duval County, which is populated all the way down through the through the thing. But but down there, it is is really nice. So that's how I came to Bartram. And so um, um, now we're we um, we're in the process of establishing Bartram Trail in Florida, uh, over at Hope, Florida, and that's kind of where I'm coming from here. Um, so uh, the Bartram Trail Conference was actually formed in, in 1975 by the um, uh, garden clubs of uh, the, uh, what is it they called, the Southeast, no, South, Southern Garden Clubs, what is it? It's getting nice. Huh? Florida Yeah, Florida well, no, this is the big one, Southeast one, yeah. And, uh, but Florida Federation was key in this and that they started this thing, and so um, the bunch of trail farm was formed and became an out. The idea was to uh, uh, was to uh, find all the marching sites. So they wrote a book about through all of these seven states exactly where marching was and all the same other. Luckily, there had been books written before on that, and so they didn't have to do a lot of unique research, but they did have to go out and find them and map them. And so um, the conference now works to promote interest in developing public access recreation trails, hiking, biking, horseback riding, and botanical gardens within the corridor of William Barton's route throughout the individual states and to coordinate regionally unified effort toward that end. Regionally unified effort toward that end, that's us. Okay, that's what we do. Okay, and so um, the next Barton Trail Conference, we have by, uh, uh, conferences by biannual, or yeah, it's again, I forget to have the word is, but it's every other year. And uh, the next Bartram Conference will be August the 4th and 5th at the University of Georgia, celebrating their football season, I'm sure. Uh, but that will also be the 250th anniversary or celebration of William Bartram's travels. He started this 250 years ago. And then, uh, let's see, that would be 1750 or 17? 73. Exactly right. So he started there. So Bartram Trail Society. Uh, was uh, reformed in 2019, actually formed back back when the conference formed, but with um, that, uh, and that was formed was formed by the uh, the Florida uh, Federation of Garden Clubs, and um, and it went kind of extinct, and then it came back again in 2019, and the purpose of that is to develop the Marshall Trail Florida working with the sites. 
So that's what we're about. Barker Trail Conference first affiliate, and uh, it's basically the water branch of the, of the conference. Okay. And um, it annually collects the St. John's River Marshall Frolic and Flack. And next, the next, con next uh, frolic is, uh, is um, April the 21st through the 23rd uh, of this year. All right. But that's that. So, what does the Martin Trail really look like? When you go to the Martin Trail Conference website, this is what it looks like. And you can see it coming down you know, the village route that he talked to you about. And all of those pin spots are either um, monument or historical signs or some sort of significant place that Bartram traveled and everything. See the one down at Tysville all the way up on the uh, on the shoreline there. And um, and so each one of these means something as far as Bartram goes. And so you can see his route through Florida. And there you are. Jacksonville is a very important part of the Bartram Trail in Florida. So what does the National Heritage Corridor look like? Well, here it is. You can see it coming down through North Carolina, right along the coast, and then uh, then it takes off out to Buffalo Lick, and it comes back down to Augusta, then takes off through Macon, all the way over to uh, uh, Montgomery, Alabama, and then over the old, he used the old federal road, uh, uh, a lot of the, that area, and he traveled all the way down to Mobile. Once he got to Mobile, he got sick, went to Pensacola to see if he could get well. And so he, he, he went to Pensacola and visited there. And then he came back by boat past Mississippi and, um, and up the Mississippi River to basically uh, just past where Baton Rouge is. Those points on the previous slide, uh, will that, can you click on those and show you exactly what he's doing? There you go. Go to the website, and choose Florida, and it's on. And you will all you'll know exactly what it is. So now, see that there's two blue, blue markers, means that there's a march on trail marker somewhere. Well, I know where it is. It's in your, your historic, your history museum, or your scientific history museum, and the storage shed. That's how we Last I checked, it's about two years ago, it was still there. So we need somebody to go get it. I must have pulled it out and put it put it time is really big to, to, to signify how to so it was far. We know that how to is a special place. So that's kind of again. So the, the car that goes goes up that whole area. So anything in the brown that you see there is legitimate for us to call if Bartram saw plants, animals, people in these areas. So that's what the heritage carter is, is to identify. And then they 2,500 miles, I think. Okay. And there's a long story of why it's not already designated as a national heritage corridor and that kind of stuff. But I'll be happy to answer that sometime, but probably. <laughs> okay. So let's go back in Florida. Well, here it is. Okay. And and there you are. And uh, so it, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a, a, a blue dotted line. That goes uh, all the way up from Fernandina, from uh, yeah, Fernandina, uh, and down through uh, through Jacksonville, all the way down to St. John's River to Blue Springs down here, all the way out to the Swanee River and and back, and uh, and that's that's what the Bartram Trail corridor looks like in Florida. And all of the you see the black dots and all those are all Bartram sites that are there. So. So it's really, really neat. So how do we know Marching was here? Well, if you open travels to about page 75 or so, you'll read this. In three days after leaving Amelia, we arrived at the Calford, a public ferry over to St. John's about 30 miles above the bar or case. That wasn't a bar, not call it bar. It was a sandwich. Okay, so. But it would make a good story, would um, And the ring of care being above a mile wide. And um, Mr. Egan, if you're from, uh, yeah, if you're from uh, Amelia Island, you know exactly who Mr. Egan is. Okay. After, after procuring a neat little sailboat for me, a large intercoat collection plantation near, fair, near the ferry, the Davis Plantation, was that it? Or one of those? Okay. 
and uh, for which I paid three guineas and departed for Saint, and he departed for Saint Augustine. Okay, and um, and so that's that's we march from saying I got here, I bought me a boat, right? So, so you always want what was his motivation? Well, we know that Billy Bartram was a Quaker. His father was a Quaker. He was friends with William Penn, who was the ultimate Quaker, right? And and so uh, the, that that was that was their thing. His benefactors back in England were all Quakers as well. So Billy was a very religious person. He was very spiritual about things. And so you want to know what his motivation was coming down here. While I was continuously impelled by a restless spirit of curiosity in pursuit of new productions of nature, my chief happiness consisted in tracing and admiring the infinite power, majesty, and perfection of the great almighty creator. And in the contemplation that through divine aid and permission, I might be instrumental in discovering and introducing into my native country some original productions of nature which might become useful to society. That's quite a challenge. And, and you can read in travels, often he launches into these absolutely worshipful dialogues and his prayer on the top of Mount Royal, which is it, it changed my life. I was reading about it because he's praying, God, give me the wisdom to take care of your friend. Wow. So that's like a naturalist name. That's like a environmentalist name. That was his motivation. He said those words right, right here in the in Duval County. So he takes off on this voyage. My little vessel being furnished with a good sail, having fish and tackle and a neat light fuzzy, which is a shot to them. Powder and ball, I found myself well equipped for my voyage about 100 miles to the trading house and forth. Off he goes. Little Wayne Larchland and Duval County has a definite. Man, they, you know, if, if you look at Duval, it kind of means more than because now you know, and look how spiritual he was here, too. You know, and it really, really kind of means something. And so, as you're reading travels and you take these parts out of it and you hear Billy talk about his passion for the, for the Ixia, he found the Ixia on his trip with his father, not on, on his trip on travels. And so that the, the quotes that were there, and um, and um, in page one twenty one of, of the book up here, he writes a whole two pages of description of just that blue flower. It's amazing, <laughs> amazing. So what does that look like? Duval County. You see the blue lines coming down here. The ones on the left were when he and his father came down. So he came down old came down old Kings Road, right? All the way down, and then uh, probably up, um, and then crossed over at Calvert, and then continued on the San Augustine. That was their trip. The father. That was in 1765. Okay, in 1774, he comes in probably around April of 1774. He comes in at Amelia Island and spends several days there exploring Amelia Island, which is a really neat story too. And then all of a sudden. He's, he starts uh, writing about these places in his book. And so if you zoom in on just Duval County, where's Billy? Hmm. Well, Billy was at Sawfield Block. We know that. He was at the Kingston Plantation. We know that. He was at Fort Carolina. We know that. He was um, at Newcastle Plantation. So, and uh, Oops, sorry, just the wrong one. Travel River, Pottsburg Plantation. And I put the Museum of, Natural, of Science and History here because that's where it's signed. <laughs> There's the Davis Plantation down in Mandarin and, um, and the Marshall Plantation and the Doctor's Lake, Black Creek. How to write up. Now, he did that with his father. He didn't do it in trials. But, but nevertheless, Billy was there. And Old King's Road. Uh, is obviously a path that he traveled. And now, so where's Billy? He's all over Duval County. So that's what your marching trail in Duval County will look like. And they, and they, so we started January 20 talking. Uh, Commissioner Randy before actually had asked us uh, to talk to your parks and rec department about doing this, and we did. And so 
We've been working with them. We've been working with them. We've been them. We still the funding is is being explored. That's where we got hung up. And on uh, um, and uh, January of 2021, Commissioner Nancy Sykes Klein championed that the St. John's County get involved. And so all this part of the Florida started in Putnam County to last. Okay. And um, and so we started getting interest and all. And so sure enough, Volusia County developed their own Martian trail using a lot of our information that we had and all. And then um, then along came Duval County was the next one that actually raised their hand and said, we want to do this. And then after that, St. John's County, that's where the plantation was. Still in San Augustine, a really large state. So, so that's a really better, and they've got signs and markers too. So that's that's uh that's all really good. And then uh, of course Nassau County, actually Nassau County would be the next county to publish their Bartram Trail into a brochure, and um, and uh, they're they're very excited and uh, about it there. And then the, the last one to come on board is Alachua, and so uh, Alachua County, they were actually the first Bartram Trail in Florida. They established theirs in 1975, and you know got a map, got the whole thing, it's all done. And whatever did anything with it, and so we're going to come go back and try to do this. But that's what we're that's what we're doing. Isn't that neat? So as a result of all this stuff that we've done and everything, some things have happened. One of the things is we've created a movie, fifty-six minute film about uh, a documentary folks of six Southerners committed to reclaiming the nature of the South through art, science, and culture using William Archer as their inspiration. So you can get to this. Drew Lyman is a burger. Uh, Jim Sawgrass, the you know Jim Sawgrass? He's the guy that portrays uh, Seminoles in the state of Florida. He's really well known. Uh, Arch and Philip Juris, never seen any of his books. Look him up. It's incredible. Uh, I was asking him to sign a book the first time I met him. I said, those are some incredible photographs. Philip says, damn, they're not photographs. <laughs> those are paintings. <laughs> You can so concentrates on uh Marshall type scenes books and all he's got about four books out. Uh, Janice Ray, you all might have read about Janice Ray. She writes books about the ecology of the cracker shop and she lives up on the Altamaha River and um and does that. She's very, very good. And so uh I have a brochure up here. If you're interested, it's free. You can uh you can Go on your website and you can watch it yourself. Or this would really be a great program. It's your chapter. You will enjoy it, I promise you. Really good program. All right. The travel from the St. John's River is a result of, the, of what we've been doing here. It's literally a guidebook of the river through March and Fridays. So, the, who wrote this book? John and Lee March wrote the book. Okay. And, and we, uh, we've got a, two editors, Thomas Halleck and and uh, Richard France and Dean Campbell. So if you, get, if you buy one of these books, you want to get Dean signed because he's all in it. But um, the Dean did the, uh, did the map for the, for the book. And it's a compilation of John Wayne Marchant's writings. And the book is uh, is compiled and edited by two Marchant scholars. And they're both Marchant Trail Society of Florida associates. They were, they were, they helped us develop this whole thing. And so they wrote this book as a result of us being here, frankly. And um, so as a guy, he might have liked to march on St. John's Isn't that cool? And uh, founder Dean is with us today. So, the other thing that it created is the St. John's River March of Crawley, April 22nd on Palakas Riverfront. We're going to have boat rides. We'll have hiking, biking, paddling. We'll have uh, one of our, our fun things is our um, passport to the past. And so, we established it. 10 stations that we make the kids go to and get their passport stamped, right? And one of those stations needs to be the native plant station. Okay, we've got the Long Warrior. We've, we've got uh, Joe Briggins, the trainer. We've got Billy Barton. We've got the Cracker Horse shows up. We've got snakes, turtles, and all kind of stuff showing up for these mm -hmm. kids. We've got St. John for the Water Management. We've got a river people. We've got all these people, but we don't have 
somebody to talk to our kids about native plants. And we would certainly love to have you do that. So April 22nd, Palatka's Board and Riverfront. Uh, come see it. It's, it's fun. If you've never had a boat ride down in um, St. Johnstown and Palatka and everything like that, we have a, we have a boat tours on that day too. The group of people out here will do it on that day. So, how can we promote our work from a legacy? Well, your name says a whole lot about your work. Yeah. So I'm asking you and to become an affiliate of the March of Trail Conference, no charge, and the March of Trail Society of Water, no charge. So we can share your information with all of our folks and our website and so forth. And then hopefully life will be worth it. Does that make sense? And that's what we'll really share with life. Isn't that cool? Great. And we would like to participate, we'd like you to participate as a native plant station in 2013 St. John's River Park, April 27 in Philadelphia. And uh, just come down there and enjoy the day with us. And we'd love to have you. Let me teach you. <laughs> but mostly, what I'd love to do is for you guys to invite us next so that we can come up here and try to find us there. Nobody in our society and all that is ever I did and all that is voice your and we'll hook it up. Oh right. That's what we want to do. We want to do that. We want to do it in a in a, in a really incredible way. Thank you so much for inviting us and I hope we've given you your money for it. And so there were some questions and Billy and I'll be happy to answer those questions now if you'd like. Where, where are all the specimens kept? Uh, they're actually, so Billy had been a friend. His name was not my father at all. He was a member of the Royal Society of London, okay? And uh, he's a doctor, and he and John Barton were good buddies and swapped uh, letters. And uh, John Barton's gardens were created to be able to send plants, American native plants to Europe for cultivation in their gardens and so forth. And so Dr. Father gave him, then he wasn't really good at, at a job. <laughs> Wait a minute. No. Yeah. Uh, and you know, he just drank. So then your grandson, he wouldn't work with mutual food. He was well educated and all of it. But Billy was a lava chap. I'm sorry. <laughs> As well, well he stole his first thing, which was a uh, woodpecker to the Royal Society of Art. So, Dr. Father set him up and, and all of that. And what he did convince him to go on travel. Stories long and sorted, but it's amazing. So, when he decided to send him on travels, then uh, he said, In Charleston. And he also sent a letter and he said, All right, this is what I want you to do. I want you to send me flower crest. And, and, and this is how I want to end up. And this and this. He had boxes, he said. So he called them marching boxes. And, they, and uh, the father bill is the one who sent a prescription on how to do this. Also, I'm giving you, or, you know, a lot of paper. I want you to draw. And all this draw on the front of the drawing, I want you to draw the plants, but we also need the bulbs. We need the root system. We need all this and the other stuff. You know, and you saw that in, in, in some of the trainings, you know, as we can hear. And, all, and so it was very restricted by the people in the So what exactly he's, but he was used to it. Why? Because his father was a pot and had the he had the quintessential garden in St. in uh in St. Ken, I'm sorry, Philadelphia. And if you go up there today, it's still there. You can see all that stuff. So those pressings were sent back to Dr. Father and Dr. Father Gill family Q Gardens, and I don't know if you've ever heard of Q Gardens, but and they've got marching plants all over the place there. But those pressings today at the United National History, National Museum, Museum History in London. And if you uh, want to go to see them, you can actually make an appointment. To go see the curator of the marketing exhibit that day. 
And not only will you get to see the precedence, but you'll get to see the actual talk. Uh, all of the pictures that you saw of Marshall here have been given to us on the Natural History Museum for, uh, for our use in, in the boat. Isn't that a well, it's been a quiet and rich hustle? Another question. So I, I visited, um, I visited, visited uh, Billy's house in Philadelphia yep. about 20 years ago, I guess. Yeah. I understand it was a family of like eight people or something in that little house, and I was walking around. Oh my mm -hmm. god, <laughs> Billy was a twin, also. So, yeah, there were 12 kids in the family, okay, but it was a bunch, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and it spread out over time and everything like that. But one had an interesting trip, yeah. he's probably right. he has, he has a, a apple press carved into the bank of the Skullkill River. Where he would do apples and then put them down in here and they'd take a wheel and run around and sell that group to the And um uh, I have read someplace that Billy actually actually tried to uh create a uh, citrus plantation or uh, citrus uh plantation along near where the Shans Bridge is. Oh well <laughs> by the time Billy got here. You gotta remember the Spanish had been here for 200 and something years, right? And there were, and if you read tribes, there are orange trees from here to, to Blue Spring. And it was just over and over and over again. But that was bought here by the Spanish. And when the Indians tasted it, they started cultivating it. And so what it looked like when Billy showed up, that Indians grew orange trees. <laughs> That's exactly right. And it's amazing. Uh, fact is, you know, we ought to stop a minute and just think about it. On this day, February the 1st, 1766, Billy Bartram and John Bartram were paddling up the river. 257 years ago, today, we're coming into Duval County. Just a minute. But we're the camps at, at, um, at Forrester Point down in Putnam County. And that's where they left this morning. It was there in Orchard County, Putnam County. And uh, it was in a, how, he, what was the description of how many orange groves, how many orange trees were there? It was well, hundreds. It was hundreds of orange. So, so and when you read, for example, his trip up to Salt Springs, which is father trying to name Billy's Springs, if we're trying to get it sick. But anyway, when when he uh, they were talking about it, it was completely lined with orange trees. Well, it's kind of hard to imagine that with as much swamplands in there. But the point is that they described orange trees all over. He really did. But really. he did have he did attempt to start a plantation at the foot of the Shan Bridge and with a historical marker there on the side of the on the south side of the bridge there. Um, on the St. John's County side, which is where his plantation is located. He had 500 acres uh, in Little Florence Cove, which is the cove just south of Sheehan's Bridge. But he was not trying to grow citrus. He was growing, going to grow yeah. rice and indigo was the, the cash crop for the time. That, 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 that may be where that may be what I, where, yeah. where I saw that. Yeah. Maybe that marker. Yeah, yeah. That. When you think of plantation, you think of you know, grand plantation. <laughs> Billy, Billy, the description that we have of Billy's plantation, he lived in a hovel. I don't know if you know what a hovel is. <laughs> but it ain't nice. Yeah. It only it is only visit for six months. And there's actually a really great, great book um called the uh, Ghost Plantations of the Saint. Exactly right. It is right like, now. I mean, reading that book, I was able to, uh, like the end of University Boulevard, I right. uh, like that was a plantation. That's what that. A bank of uh, Virginia lives. That was a plantation. By, by the time Billy came back in 1770, remember, that was the reason that the governor of St. Augustine and King George III had named John Bartram as the king's boss. So he would come down here and scout it out because. They had just acquired this land in 1763. So in 1766, they had to get somebody down here to tell them what they owned. And so it was the king's effort to sell the swamp land in Florida. That's exactly what it was. And so the deal was that if they gave you a 
a British plantation out of your book that you're talking about that you had to uh, you had to cultivate, you had to build on it, you had to get slaves to work. And so that was part of the deal. And so by the time Billy came back down here, there were plantations literally from Jacksonville all the way down below Lake Georgia. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And that's why he doesn't mention it in his book, because he knew what plantations meant. Cut down all the trees, dig up all the plants, pump all and all the ACS. Mm -hmm. So he knew it wasn't good, and it's not in his book. He's just not there. He, he mentions the word plantation three or four times, and that's it. They were there. <laughs> they were there. They were there. Now, now, read that that book, The Ghost Plantation. Yeah. It is an interesting book. That guy has that research. He also is the, the individual that created for uh, is in North Florida University that has the Florida history online. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And you can go there and follow Barton's Travis or John Barton's journal the whole way. And uh, so if you go to that website and look for John Barton's journal you can actually follow him all the way down the river or you can like our facebook page because we're posting every day <laughs> yeah what's the book the book ghost uh, uh i'm sorry ghost plantations of florida yeah. uh no, ghost plantations of the saint john river right. it's, 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 it's in the latter yes sir the barker and all have gone whatever we had yes yes, yes sir. Sir. so did they have an opinion <laughs> yeah now you got to remember when Billy came back from, and, he, and he published Travis, what was going on in the United States between 1774 and 1791? Mm -hmm. There was a lot of turmoil going on. Billy skated around home that he was pacifist, didn't want to, he did sign a, a pledge of allegiance to the, to the United States, probably because Benjamin Franklin told him to. And I mean, that's, that, that's true. There's a, a really neat picture or a painting of, uh, of a day in 1791 where um, uh, there is uh, George Washington, there's Benjamin Franklin, there's Thomas Jefferson, all at Bartram's Gardens, having arrested during the Continental Congress in 1791, only three months before they actually signed the Congregation. And so that's how hype he was with all that good stuff. So, but the, what, what was it? the Philadelphia, Philadelphia Philosophical Society was begun by John and John Bartram and Benjamin Franklin. That turned into the Philadelphia Science Organization. And obviously Billy was part of that. And so he was always the mentor for people exploring and doing all the botanist stuff and, and, and ornithology became one of his expertise. And if you look at his drawings, they're very specific. Those He doesn't consider those to be artwork. He considers those to be, um, uh, to, to be illustrations of what is. In other words, he's trying to... convince people in Europe of what we have. see if I can get back to it. These are these are other plants that we, that we have here. It's the same thing Darwin did is because they didn't have photographs yet. Right, exactly, exactly. So so the the account that I have of Billy meeting Mr. Audubon was just that Mr. Audubon had seen Billy's drawings. And so he came and to Philadelphia and uh, and met with him there under the Philadelphia Philosophical Society banner as a scientist, and they talked about it. And Billy told him how to shoot the birds before he drew them. Trying try to get back to the value yeah, here. There we go. And yeah. so, and this is an example of what he was saying. Instead of just drawing, it's really funny when you when you uh, talk to Bartram scholars about this particular drawing of his. Because if you read Bartram's description of this drawing, it's a mythology. And oh, by the way, a little green bedroom walked in front of my picture. I was I mean, that's the way they look at it. I'll throw that in. But when uh, when Father Dale said, be conservative with your paper, quite often Billy didn't stick on one subject. He did many, many subjects. And they, did I answer your question? So they did meet. 
And they did meet, but they had different purposes because Audubon was very artistic. Billy Bartram was very scientific. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'll cut back to these other flowers that we have your other drawings that he did. Okay, any other questions? I, I, I'd like to mention one more book. Pardon? It got uh, Bartram is in the book. Uh, but I, I think it's appropriate here to mention that. I just, I just returned my copy to the library. It's called um, Founding Gardeners. Yes. Yes, And it's the first, first court president. Absolutely. Uh, Washington, I can't remember the order of the first court, but Washington, Adams, Jefferson, and Monroe. Right. And all the time the Revolutionary War is going on, right. they're writing letters. To their state managers about their gardens. Yeah. And so one thing that, especially toward Washington, throughout the uh, establishment of this estate, is he wanted made it. Exactly. So, and it's called Founding Gardeners. I think it's 2022 copyright. Right. Um, so, it's on Bacon Bank now, too. Oh, it's on Bacon Bank. And so there's, I uh, believe, the author, Andrew Andrew Wolf. And Andrew Ruff also wrote the Brother Gardeners. Yeah, yeah. And Bartram's in there with Emmaus and all these other, other famous folks. And um, and also, yes, very familiar with all that good stuff. And, and that's how famous he was. Because, I mean, again, when you think about, let's see, I think there are seven founding fathers, what we call, of, of the United States. And uh, in one painting I've got three. But we have documentation, Madison and Adams. And so I count at least six out of the seven founding fathers were at Bartram Gardens. Why? Thomas Jefferson lived across the river. And Freedom Hall was right across the river. You can literally see it from the park of Bartram Gardens. You can see it over there. And so when they got burned out at Freedom Hall trying to negotiate the Constitution, where did they go? It went to Billy's house or John. So, really interesting stuff. But well, once you get involved with this, it's really neat. So, I mentioned this book. And so, if, if you if you buy the book or get the book or whatever and go to page 121, you can read the entire uh, the entire dialogue that Bill Bartram writes about your Bartram PC. It's a there's two pages. A uh, description of your art. It's it's full of inspiration. I mean, I had tears in my eyes. I'm like, I'm going to talk to these people. Oh, they know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Is it really? It's, it's, it's incredible. Of course, I think this is. That's what we want. That's what we want. Okay. Any other? We're thinking we'll get a copy of that book for our library. Yeah. Okay. You should. You should, because you really need to get a copy of this app. And you need to send it to every member that say memorize this because he <laughs> those black logs that you saw. He did he mentions the HC only one sentence travels. So don't go to travels looking for it. It ain't there. Okay. It's it's only in the letter that uh, that we did include in this travel book. Isn't that neat? So any other question? We'll be here. And uh, and thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you. It's a removal base, so please, please help us out. And next month, our meeting is on March 8th at the Mandarin Garden Club. So don't come here. We won't be here. <laughs> thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do you know? Excellent. Do you see the girls? I don't care. Thank you so much. I'm going to see you back. Thank you.